Welcome back friends. In the previous video we learned what the basic trigonometric ratios were and how to calculate them. Today we will take this a bit step further and uh, figure out some more trigonometric ratios. Now look at this triangle ABC where the angle A is marked as the angle theta and angle C is equal to 90 degrees. So what should be the value of this third angle here in terms of theta? Well, it's going to be 90 minus theta because the sum of all the three angles in a right triangle or in any triangle for, for that matter is equal to 180 degrees. So if, if one of these angles is 90, then the other two must also add up to 90. So if this is theta, then that has to be 90 minus theta. Now, let's say that these sides opposite the smaller and all the angles are small a, small b, and small c. Now, if I asked you what is the value of sine of theta, remember, so ka tua. So, sine theta, as you remember, is opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be a upon c. And cos of theta is adjacent upon hypotenuse, which is B upon C. But all trigonometric ratios are in relation to a certain angle. So what if I were to focus on this angle, angle B, which is known as 90 minus theta, and I asked you to figure out what sine of 90 minus theta was. Now, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So the side opposite 90 minus theta is this. Therefore, sine of 90 minus theta is going to be equal to opposite, which is B, over the hypotenuse, that is C. While cos of 90 minus theta and cos is adjacent. So the side adjacent to this angle 90 minus theta is side with the length A. And this is equal to, therefore, going to be A over the hypotenuse, which is C. Now notice that sine of theta was A upon C. And cos of 90 minus theta is also equal to A upon C, which means that these two ratios are actually equal. And similarly, cos of theta was B upon C. And sine of 90 minus theta is also B upon C, which means that these two ratios are equal. Now this brings us to the conclusion that sine theta is equal to cos of 90 minus theta. And that cos theta is equal to sine of 90 minus theta. This is very important, so I'm going to say it again. Sine of theta is always equal to cos of 90 minus theta, while cos of theta is always equal to sine of 90 minus theta. And let's see what happens with tan theta. Now tan theta, as you remember, to a tan is opposite. Opposite of theta is A upon adjacent, which is B. So tan theta is going to be equal to A over B. And what's tan of 90 minus theta? 90 minus theta is this angle B here. Okay. And, and the tan of 90 minus theta is going to be the side opposite of this angle divided by the side adjacent to this angle. So opposite to, si to, to, to 90 minus theta is this. And adjacent is this. So therefore, we can say that tan of 90 minus theta is equal to B upon A. So tan theta was A upon B, and tan of 90 minus theta is B upon A, which is the reciprocal. So therefore, we can conclude that tan of theta is equal to 1 over tan of 90 minus theta. Okay? So these three are very important rules to know. So let's write this again. Sine of theta is equal to cos of 90 minus theta. And cos of theta is equal to sine of 90 
minus theta. And tan of theta is equal to 1 upon tan of 90 minus theta. Okay? So, for example, if I asked you sine of 20 degrees is equal to cos of what? Well, it's going to be cos of 90 minus 20 degrees. And what is 90 minus 20? Correct, that's 70. So that's cos of 70 degrees. So therefore, sine of 20 is equal to cos of 70. Okay? Right, now let's try this. Sine of 40 degrees is equal to cos of what? Well, it's going to be cos of 90 minus 40. And 90 minus 40 is 50. So therefore, sine of 40 is equal to cos of 50. So what's sine of 45 degrees going to equal the cos of? Well, 90 minus 45 gives you 45. So therefore, sine of 45 is equal to cos of 45 degrees. Okay? And that is actually correct. If you were to find sine of 45 or the cos of 45, you'll get the same answer. By the way, you should know that these angles that add up to 90 are called complementary angles. Complementary angles are angles that add up to 90 degrees. Well, let's try a further example. Let's say a question tells you that you have this triangle ABC and that the angle here is theta. And the question says that given that sine, given that sine of theta equals to 5 upon 13, find cos of theta. Now, what you can simply do to answer this question is that you know that sine, which is, so, which is sine, is opposite upon hypotenuse. So opposite theta is BC and the hypotenuse is AB. So you know that sine of theta is 5 upon 13. So you can assume that this is 5 and the hypotenuse is 13. Remember, because trigonometry is nothing but a ratio, assuming the sides to be equal to the ratio, to find another ratio, it will work perfectly fine. You won't make a mistake. Now, you know that in terms of ratio, the length of BC is 5 and, uh, and AB is 13, and you have to figure out the length of AC, because to figure out the value of cos theta, you need to know what the adjacent side is. So you will now apply the Pythagoras theorem. Uh, let's call this side B. So you know that A square plus B square equals to C square, or that 5 square plus B square equals to 13 square. So 25 plus B square equals to 169. Therefore, B square is 169 minus 25. That's equal to, B square is equal to 144. So therefore, B is equal to the under root of 144, which is equal to 12. So we know that the length B is equal to 12. And the question says, find the value of cos theta. Okay, now cos we know is kah, C-A-H, which is adjacent over hypotenuse. So that has to be the adjacent side, which is 12, over the hypotenuse, that is 13. So therefore, cos of theta is equal to 12 over 13. I hope this is clear to you. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to solve this particular question which tells you that in this triangle sine of theta is equal to, let's say, 3 over 5. And your job is to find the value of cos of theta. So you know that sine theta is 3.5 and you have to find the value of cos theta. Go ahead and pause uh, pause this video right now and find out the answer and then replay it again to see whether you got it right. 
Okay, so sine theta sine is opposite upon hypotenuse is equal to 3 upon 5. So this, the opposite side must be 3 and the hypotenuse must be 5. And you don't know the basis, let's call that B. So we'll apply the Pythagorean theorem again. So we know that A square plus B square equals to C square, which means that 3 square plus B square should be equal to 5 square, which is 25. So you'll get B square is 25 minus 9 which means b square is equal to 16 and therefore b must be equal to the square root of 16 which is equal to 4 so we can write the base equal to 4 and the question says find cos theta so that we know that cos is adjacent which is 4 upon the hypotenuse that is 5 so the answer is 4 upon 5 Now, here's an important property related to sine theta and cos theta. Now, as you remember, the Pythagorean theorem tells us that a square plus b square is equal to c square. So if you were to figure out the value of sine theta, you'd get a upon c. If you find the value of cos theta, you'd get b upon c. Now, let's see what happens if I square a upon C and I square B upon C and I add them up I'm going to get A square upon C square plus B square upon C square so because the denominator is same in both the cases the numerator just becomes A square plus B square divided by C square but we already know that A square plus B square is equal to C square so I could replace, if I wanted, a square and b plus b square. I could just easily replace it, simply replace it with c square over c square. And because you'd have the same value with the numerator and the denominator, they would cancel out and leave you an answer equal to 1. Therefore, we now can say that sine theta squared plus cos theta squared should be equal to 1. It's also written as sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta is equal to 1. This is a very important and useful trigonometric identity, so please make sure that you learn this. We can use the identity that we have just learned, which is sine squared of theta plus cos squared of theta is equal to 1, to figure out answers to the questions that we did a couple of minutes ago. So, for example, if a question says that given that sine of theta is equal to 3 upon 5, find cos of theta. Now, since you know that sine square theta plus cos square theta equals to 1, you could use that. Okay, so in place of sine square theta, you can just write 3 upon 5, the whole thing squared. And cos squared of theta stays as it is because we don't know what it is and we, that's, that's what we're trying to figure out. should be equal to 1. So what you do is you take this to the right side and you solve. So you get cos squared of theta equals to 1 minus 9 upon 25 which is equal to 16 upon 25, which means that cos of theta is equal to the square root of 16 upon 25, and that's equal to 4 upon 5. That's our answer. I want you to try out this question. Given that sine of theta equals, equals 3 over 8, find the value of cos theta. Hit the pause button and try solving it right now. Here's a solution. See if you've done it correctly. I hope you have. In the next video, we'll talk about some special right triangles. See you there.